Hey folks, welcome back to the channel, your home for all content, Lord of the Rings home. Today, I just wanted to give sort of an account update, what I'm working on, what my plans are for the future, just sort of where things are at for me in particular on my main account. So with that, let's just get into it here. This is my main account. All right, let me go back. Level 57, almost level 58. Obviously, the thing I'm working on right now most is the elves, and that's obviously for Elrond. So I have Arwen and Elra here and Elodin pretty much close to where I want them maxed out. I need some more skills on Elra here and Elodin. Elra here is, I believe, level four across the board. Yeah. So I want to make sure I get him up because I think he's going to be an awesome damage dealer part of this team. But right now I'm sort of saving all of my mats, all my purple mats for when Elrond comes out. Basically. The goal there is as soon as Elrond gets released, I want to do the event and then have him at G8 and like max most of his skills as far as I can. Elden's a little bit of the same. He's got pretty much everywhere, the, everything I want on him. I do want to get this passive up, but I'm not level 60 yet, obviously. That's going to be one of the things that's sort of slowing me down. I'm not so keen. Obviously, I've got Naramiri to five stars, Lomi in here to five stars. I'm not so keen on leveling up these people as much. Lomian, probably more than Naramiri. The idea here being that I'm going to use these five for the event. Hopefully, these three will carry me uh, for the five-star event, right? And Naramiri, I'm just going to uh, straight swap for Elrond because he's obviously a much better healer and leader. Lomian, I'm, I'm not sure about. Uh, I'm leaning towards I don't really want to level him up that much and put a lot of resources into him. I still might just so that I can have more of a perspective on like how a full Rivendell team works, but I'm holding off on that until I get Elrond basically. So elves are sort of my priority right now. I sort of stopped working on my shadow squad almost completely, I would say. So I have Ugluck maxed and then Iron Hide as well. This is still kind of annoying that they haven't fixed the default sorting logic. Um, to be just like your most powerful characters. Let me just fix that actually right now. Power. Cool. So I also have Ironhide pretty much up there. Um, I'm still thinking about whether I want to use Ironhide, Ugluck, or Halberad possibly in a fifth slot for the arena, but I've just stopped working on shadow characters pretty much across the board. Uh, they're just... I. They're just not as good as light characters at the moment. And so I think we got to wait until Haradrim come out, Nazgul come out, Witch King, and then I think I'll dump a lot of my resources into there. In terms of like being able to gear Elrond, let me switch um, over here. This is sort of just my prepared spreadsheet. And green here is things I, I have enough of. And then obviously red is things I need more of. And so right now I need a bunch of those candles and I need the indigo. I'm not going to worry too much about green gear. Um, usually they sell like little packs that have the green gear so you don't have to farm it as much when you, you know, you, when you get a new character. At least that's how it was for the marquee characters, right? The big issues I'm having, it's not even light crystals. Uh, it's gold and purple ability mats. So especially getting like three of his skills to level six, which is what I want to do after, right off the bat. Well, as far as I can, it'll be five for most of them. Um, it just takes so many purple ability mats, 930 to take all the skills from five to six, including the leadership. It's yeah, 1650. That's insane. That's so many purple mats. And then the skills are also where you're going to get so much of your gold cost. So I am, I think I mentioned this in the, um, skill priority video I did for Lord Elrond, but yeah, I'll probably stop at skill level three here to start just always grant the regeneration. I can worry about this later. And then stopping at level four here. If there are no elf allies, gain one stamina for this ability. I think that's a good stopping point. Four is fine. It's usually in the, like, you know, tens, probably going to be like something like 60 to 80 of those rare ability materials. And then I'm just not going to take this out all the way down to six until I have an excess of sort of materials there. Um, but yeah, he's got three other skills that I want to max out right away. Obviously, I'm not level 60, but I will probably be around level 58 by the time he is released. Um, so I should be able to get everything but the passive and maybe the final leadership ability, which I don't think you can get anyway because we don't have enough of those 
um, like epic ability materials that you can only get from the marquee events at the moment. All right, now that we're back in the game, you can see I have about 1.5 mil. I, I think I'd be more comfortable with around 2 mil. And then for the purple ability mats, I have, let's see, 1,400, which is not bad. I think that's pretty good. Close to the 1,650 I was calculating if I wanted to sort of upgrade everything to max. So I'm, I feel, I'm feeling comfortable on purple mats, and that's 90% because Guild Chapter 5 drops so many purple mats. Also, a lot of good gold return. And if you don't know, you get uh, extra XP. It's not the one-to-one uh, energy to account XP like all everything else in the game. It's you get 12, 12 account XP for 10 energy, so it's slightly more. So I've been farming a lot of that as well just to sort of get ahead there before they fix it. So I'm still farming the Rohan 3 to uh, 5 stars here just so that I can kind of finish them off. Again, all the legendary characters are going to be required to have five-star unlocks for the time being, so I think it's sort of a nice stopping point to farm the character shards to that. So Rohan 3, and then also still doing the Isengard 3 as well. Ugluck, Mauher, and Dunhar, uh, getting those guys to five stars as well. Probably not Ugluck at the moment, just because he's in the guild campaign, but Definitely farming Dunhar and Mauhar. And then I've also started farming Azak because he is just a beast. I have not done anything on Morja, really. How much do I have on him? Yeah, so I could take him to like two stars. But no, I, I'm focusing mostly on the other four at the moment. And then what I've started to do also is passively sort of farm the uh, Haradrim. So I had been working on Wubate a little bit just because I had excess currency in uh, whatever is in the guild store, guild campaign token store, whatever. So I think I could probably take him up to three stars, maybe four stars. But again, just sort of getting the, the star level requirement out of the way now so I can focus on farming gear for characters that I want to actually get up when I have that opportunity. So the other thing is I'm just going to keep farming Robo and Yef2 because they're hard, they're hard node farms. And those just take forever. I don't want to have to spend the extra gems to refresh. So might as well just farm them now. If we think that they're going to be either a counter to elves or going to be used to unlock the Witch King. Obviously, you're going to need the marquee characters probably if this is the team. But if you can get these out of the way, then that's a big chunk of uh, work done. So that's kind of what I'm farming day to day. I've slowed down on farming light and shadow crystals just because I think I have an excess. I've been hoarding so many of them. I haven't really been gearing anybody else up. Just been working on getting that gear for Elrond, basically. Let's talk about Arena. This is pretty typical for where I sit. I sit in Mithril 2 and Mithril 1. Um, usually drop down to Mithril 2 overnight, and then I kind of work my way back up to Mithril 1 before my payout time. This is my defensive team, and if you saw my video on sort of the worth the whale for Elodin, I basically said, yeah, this is the team I'm using on defense because, and I put specifically because Arwen's in here, and this is sort of a team that takes a while to kill because it's got so much sustain, regeneration, passing around a bunch of different ta taunts and provokes that it puts other players under pressure to sort of get through this, I think. I don't know, I guess, because I've never had to play it. But on offense, I actually use... Uh, let's just, I'll just show you. I use this instead. So I sub out Arwen for Ironhide, and this just makes things, it cuts the time of these arena matches in half. Just because he has so much more damage output, you're not worried about the sustains for the Arwen team as well. Obviously, when Elrond comes out, what my plan is, is switch him to lead, and then he's going to be with Elodin, Arwen, Elrahir, Elrond, and then yes, I, I don't know who I'm going to slot in fifth. Halbarad possibly, because he's going to give just from his passive, give like more health to the team as a whole. Ugluck, maybe, because his control is unbeatable in Arena. I'm going to actually make a video about how good I think Ugluck is in the Arena. And then, you know, maybe possibly Ironhide, just because he has crazy AoE damage output. I'm not sure his damage output is going to be as worth it um, anymore compared to like how Elrond's healing ability is going to go. The ability of the elves to just sort of lap you, and you know, they can put a slow on you. They've got these abilities that give them turn meter, like Arwen does. 
Elra here is just a, the whole elf team is actually like in the top half of speed for the characters that you have. I just think the big characters are going to be very slow and take like one, maybe two turns. But, you know, if I'm going up against a brute, the, one of the first things I'm going to do is just target the brute and take him down first before he has a chance to get off like two turns, get his might out or whatnot. So we'll see how that goes. Obviously, there's a lot of playtesting to do, and I'm actually very excited about that. I'm at a point in, I'm in Arena Shard 1, and I'm in a point where the teams I'm facing, the upgrades they're getting are just like maxing out skills and increases in star level. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not really interested in increasing the star level for some of these characters. I think I would rather build up my roster wider than just focus, focusing on my arena. Maybe if my arena starts to get like very impacted, right? Um, if I start dropping below Mithril 2 and just sitting in gold 1 and gold 2, then I will focus more on it. But for now, this is a pretty good spot for me, I feel like. Pushing up further is just almost impossible. I'm playing with... I started on on um, global launch day. I didn't do the two weeks before in the limited test launch. So I'm behind in that respect. I want to talk about the biggest regrets I have in my account as well. And they come in the name of Miri. That's probably my first and biggest regret is Miri and not leveling up and putting more focus into Eomer. Uh, she's just not good. I thought the Rangers were going to be a little bit better. That turned out not to be the case. Eomer is a very good character and I'm suffering in... What is the challenge? Uh, I think it's, it's going on today, actually. Yeah, the Forge of the Deep challenge, which is very important because light crystals are such a bottleneck, right? Human and Goblin. I have to use Miri here, and I just can't beat this one yet because I don't want to put any more resources into Miri, and I don't feel like I can put anything into Eomer at the moment because I'm saving for Elrond. So I'm going to have to remedy this at some point and get, you know, get at least this squad, and then I think, yeah, this is level 60, so I can wait a little bit for that, but definitely getting this one because... It's an increase in from three to four, and that makes a big difference, especially in the long run. Miri, that's my first biggest regret, I would say. And my second biggest regret, you this might surprise you, actually. Sorry, let me rank by power again. Bolg. Uh, Bolg is my biggest regret on the shadow side of things. And the reason for that is because I started just doing... My shadow team was essentially uh, the Isengard 3. So you have Ugluck, you have Dunhar, you have Mauher, and then I would use Ironhide, of course, and then I would just slot Bolg in. But Bolg has this sort of thing where he is, when he's above 50% health, he starts tanking. So he always throws a Provoke up, right? Yeah. On turn, if this character is above 50% health, gain one stack of Provoke up to a max of two stacks. If it's below 50% health, gain defensive. And I think this passive works really well when you have Tordok on the team, who is supposed to be his bodyguard, right? I don't have Tordok up that much, and I don't really want to replace any of the Isengard 3 or Ironhide. So I just am kind of stuck with this Bolg who is doesn't have as much resources as the other people on my team, and it just doesn't fit together quite as well as I would like. So he's actually, yet yeah, my biggest regret on that side of things for the Shadow Campaign, which is kind of wild to say, actually. So my Tordok is only level 31. Um, he's like, what, gear 5? Yeah, gear 5. And he's got some skills, but not really. Uh, in terms of other regrets, you know, I think I've done a pretty decent job of focusing in and doing pretty, you know, staying pretty focused at the moment. I do have Brute at four stars that I can promote to five stars. I might take him up to higher levels if it still seems like Brute is the way to go for the arena meta. I'm not completely convinced, but I've started putting resources into him just because that attacker and support challenge, uh, I needed another one, another person that was not Miri, and he fit the bill, and he just he just does work. Um, he's, he's a very good character. Still not convinced he's going to be arena meta with elves still, but... That, that's to be seen. Um, so that's kind of where my account is at. 
I'll probably do another account update as soon as I hit 60, which could be like a week or two from now. And just to say, okay, here's what I've got. You know, now that I've reached 60, here's what my priorities are outside of leveling. Here's how my habits on the day-to-day are changing. You know, what I'm focusing on, what I'm not focusing on. And um, yeah, that's that's kind of where we're at. I'm going to try and put out some more videos this week. It's been very, very busy for me. Um, definitely going to be live streaming the Elrond event come Monday. Going to try and do some long-term speculation videos, maybe some stuff on Ugluck. Um, I am going to make a very, very detailed, like beginner new player guide and like compendium almanac type situation. But if there's anything else you want me to cover, just let me know down in the comments and then I can maybe work on that. Thanks for watching.